Thank you for moving on. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, okay, we are now recording. Uh, welcome to the January 27th, uh, 2020 uh, Foreign Politicians Call. Uh, first things up, we have a note taker. Uh, and we'll start with the high priority initiative updates. Releases. Alan. Hi. <clears throat> yeah, sorry, I can talk. Um, so just a quick update on JSIFS HTTP client. There's a pre-release out of uh, version 42, uh, which has all of the new uh, async await goodness in it. Um, there is a picture there that I'll link to, which actually, if I bring it up, uh, here, here we go. Share, share, sure, why not? There we go. Um, yeah, uh, in the right-hand corner, you're, you might have some people like, uh, <clears throat> covering it right now, but if you move those people out the way, then um, you will see that version 42, the actual bundle size is way, way smaller than it used to be. So uh, hooray for that. Um, and that, so that's just the pre-release. We will get to the final release at some point soon. Um, and then the second thing I wanted to talk about was that uh, JSIPFS 041 is coming soon. Um, the uh, the reason that there's a pre-release of the HTTP client is that the async await uh, pull requests all got merged. So um, we are just finishing up bits and pieces that need to be done for the JS IPFS release. Um, the highlights are the async await stuff, but also the Unix FS version 1.5 stuff that Alex has done. Um, all of the API changes for which there are a lot and they are breaking are in the release issues. So um, have a look at that. Uh, and there is a migration guide for everyone. So uh, if you are unsure about what is going on, how am I meant to change my code from what it is now to what it should be, um, then take a look at that. Um, looking at the, so I was looking today at the interop tests, uh, and let me show you this. Um, share again, there we go, cool. Um, so these are the results of a test run in the interrupt test suite uh, on the left is the new uh, IPFS with uh, async await stuff merged and on the right is the current version that's already out. Um, and so what this is, is this is, this is doing interrupt tests between two different JS, uh, uh, sorry, two different IPFS implementations. Um, and you can see here, we've got like a JS to go uh, and JS to JS nodes here. And what the tests do is they spin up two nodes, transfer a single file between those two nodes. There's no one else involved. So they're pretty simple really. But um, looking at these results here, um, you can see that you know, on the left-hand side, every, everything here is taking a whole lot less time than it used to. If we look at, for instance, this, um, oh, whoops. Uh, so this 67 meg file, uh, this takes uh, about eight seconds now. It used to take 27 seconds. So, whoa, okay, way faster in some cases. So these, these speeds range between um, uh, increases of between 40 and 90% faster, uh, which, is, which is pretty amazing. Um, it's still like way slower than I'd like it to be, and it's a lot slower than Go IP, uh, Go IP. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's what I mean, Go. Um, but uh, they are good improvements um, to be talking about anyway. So, um, yeah, uh, and that's all I wanted to say, I, apart from I put down here JS lib P2P, Jacob didn't put it down, but maybe you want to tell us about that. Yes, it is. The refactor is shipping tomorrow. We're putting it on a boat. It's going for sure. No, probably. It's out. Going to send it. That is that. Okay. In terms of GoIPFS, uh, we think that 0 0.4.23 will come out today, uh, unless we have a lot of discussions around the blog post. But the blog post looks great. Um, so please take a look at it quickly so we can ship the release. Uh, yeah, everything seems to be stable. We fixed a bunch of bugs. Um, okay. Next up, upgrade testing infrastructure. Uh, I actually have a bunch of updates here. Um, yeah, so I know Anton has a bunch of updates. Anton's here. Well, the update from my side is that the infrastructure is getting more stable. Um, right now, you can easily start like 500 or 1,000. Um, test plan instances on Kubernetes. It's documented and it's fairly straightforward, just like a few steps that you need to 
run and wait for your cluster to come up um, and be running. Um, when I go above 500 uh, test plan instances on the DHT tests, I'm starting to see some timeout issues, um, but it's still not clear whether this is infra related or whether this is test related. Um, for example, I see that we have some retry mechanism there and the retry uh, doesn't seem to be working because even though we retry, the dialer has some back off time. So actually we're not really retrying any dials. Um, so yeah, if someone knows more about the DHT test plan, um, some help there would be appreciated or I'll be looking at that in the coming days as well. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all from my side. Yeah, Stephen, you wanna take over? There are more updates uh, on the infra. Okay. I... Yeah, so we have two other updates. Um, the testing, uh, there's progress underway to test multiple versions of IPFS or Liquid V at the same time. Uh, and there's also a patch underway to uh, store assets and other logs locally. Currently, this patch only, uh, the, well, it only works for Docker Swarm local. Um, uh, hopefully, we can port this to Kubernetes pretty soon. And it basically just stores all of your logs in a folder. And it's a nice way. Or, the nice thing about that is that you can just like, cath all together, run them through JQ, and do whatever you want to do with them. Um, but yeah, please test these and review them. Uh, that's all I have to say here. Um, so moving on to content routing. Uh, Jacob, you have an update? Yeah. Um, yeah, so we've gone through and created all of the high level, like our epic level or feature set issues, and they're all in GitHub um, with notes on all of the design notes. Um, that we've worked through in a uh, well's testing scenarios and what success means. Um, so this week we're going to be working on breaking down the remainder of the work into smaller tasks, smaller tasks and estimating those out so that we have a better idea of when we believe that everything uh, will land. So we will create uh, additional issues as we go through um, to attempt to uh, parallelize that as much as possible and get this thing shipped. Yeah, I have one initial update. The content routing plan has seen many updates. So if you've looked at it before, uh, just take a quick look through it again. Uh, the structure is mostly the same, but flushed out a couple of issues. Uh, yeah. OK, moving on to uh, well, I mean, also, sorry. Uh, other updates there, Adin. Yeah, um, so I have a uh, Kademlia query logic PR that passes all the local tests seems to mostly do the, the things that we want. Um, but we need to do some test ground running on it and seeing, see what's going on. Uh, we put together, uh, I was working with Steven last week a lot. We put together some like graphs to kind of see like what the state of the connections of the network look like because we were seeing lots of like disjointed networks, which is pretty concerning. Um, and maybe that these are just occurring at like very small network sizes where it's easier to occur. But the, the test is going to have some issues. Like multiple bootstrappers can call the way they're set up right now will cause disjointed networks. Or uh, the connection manager, the way the connection manager does trimming may also cause the disjointed networks. So we're going to have to figure out what we want to do there, um, both in terms of testing to see if the query logic is correct, and then second, and then figuring out what we want to do about this accidentally creating disjointed networks problem. Uh, Dean and Anton, if you both have time today, could you get together and try to like, uh, or Anton, could you start a Dean on using uh, Kubernetes? If that hasn't happened. Yeah, he he gave me some pointers already, okay. but that was at the end of last week. So I'm gonna that was my first step for today is see if I can okay. get this to work. Oh, it's too late for you, Tom. We do it tomorrow, but yeah, we can totally do it tomorrow. Go over the um, readmes. It's literally less than ten commands, and um, we can go over in detail tomorrow if you have any questions. I think the main issue is that you still need an account, right, Anton? Or sorry, Adin. Uh, I'm good. Anton sent me. You got oh, okay, okay. So yeah, we'll start with that, and then bug Anton. Okay. Uh, moving on to subdomain gateways, vital. Uh, good news is that it's mostly done. Uh, the basic functionality is implemented. The remaining part is uh, writing tests and, and docs finalizing stuff. Uh, the only thing maybe 
that's more for like a separate review, but I think it's small enough to mention here is that like under gateway section, we got, we historically had this thing called path prefixes. It was not documented for a long time and only like provided docs that it's about like this header. And the pro sort of like a problem is that we are reusing this, this like name um, uh, in uh, those like host name specific sections, but we use it for a to kind of totally different feature, which is not related to this header. It's not wired up. Uh, so, so something that remains to be decided, maybe like uh, in async, I'll write uh, write uh, those concerns up and ask you for a review. Uh, do we want like basically to split it into two things or uh, clarify the docs? Uh, but that's like the only remaining thing. Yes, Steven. So I, I think this actually came from my mistake. Uh, I misunderstood what the original feature did. Uh, it, so that's why like, I implemented it that way, thinking, oh, yeah, this is the same thing. Um, we probably don't actually need the new feature or the new version, like the path prefixes in the gateway, but we could talk about that offline. Oh, that, that, um, that's actually super useful to me. Then I'll, oh, okay. oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, I'll t take another pass and add this, uh, okay. push those changes, and then ask you. Yeah. Okay. We can also just call it like, namespace. Uh, Alan. Is there a version of this planned for JSRTFS, I do? Oh man, it's like the next thing, right after I like finish this, I will right. implement the same thing. I just like don't want to jump do it twice. Do it twice. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, so that covers subject and gateways. Bit swap updates. I see Dirk typing. No, it's not me. It's my my doppelganger over there in Germany. Um. So BitSwap updates are that basically I've been running some tests against test ground. So I want to give a, a shout out to Anton and Steven and Raul for getting that into a state where we can actually run some, some tests and try out different variables. It's pretty, pretty exciting. So I've managed to produce a few graphs that I'm going to, uh, I'm going to wait or hold off on showing until next week. So there's a little teaser for you, but I just want to make sure that uh, all my tests are running consistently. Um, and then I can show some some decent comparisons. But the good news is that it seems like the changes we've been making are effective and that uh, we've got some pretty big improvements over the old bits. Can I give a spoiler? <laughs> yeah, you can, go ahead. Uh, so unlike the previous version where having more seeds would make things slow down, in the new version, having more seeds makes things speed up slightly. <laughs> yeah, that's a big uh, big improvement. Okay, async await refactor. We already had a massive thing about this, but <coughs> wait, what do we have this twice? Oh, okay. Of releases. Yeah. Okay. Any additional updates people want to talk about? Not really. I put at the end of there, let's maybe remove this initiative now because I think the updates will be like there won't really be anything else. We're looking to maybe release a JS IPFS release candidate this week. Um, so there's not really going to be much here from now on anyway. So let's just remove it unless there's any objections. This is such a big deal. Yes, we rarely get to remove initiatives from our list. <laughs> this is wonderful. Oh yeah, it's one of the very few awesome endeavors, uh, the, uh, the, one of the very few, I, I guess you can call it epics, but um, issues that had an awesome uh, endeavor uh, label that actually ever got closed. <laughs> so, hooray, it's going, it's almost gone. Okay. Peter, uh, streaming, talking. Yes, crappy news for last. Uh, so I really, really was hoping that I'll be able to uh, show the actual thing today during lightning talks, but uh, after a marathon session, it turned out that, yeah, it's not going to happen. So um, I am having a lot of trouble with uh, if not going fast enough uh, for test purposes. And uh, I have one more idea to try that will unfortunately require another like rewrite of the of the insights. And if I cannot like get this in the next three hours, I'll just cut that scope and publish what I have, uh, which is already pretty good. It 
basically allows uh, you to uh, test any type of um, combination of chunking parameters with uh, pre-chunking and sizing and stuff like that uh, entirely outside of the Go IBFS um, uh, ecosystem. So you so you basically can experiment with with different linkers and stuff like that without having to rewrite a whole bunch of code. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, it is a little slower than Go IPFS, which was definitely is definitely going to be a showstopper. But uh, I will have to deal with this further down the road. So uh, next step is to uh, put everything back together kind of the way it was uh, today uh, for the rest of the day and have it actually available tomorrow for people to play with. Uh, would you like to pair on the performance profile? Because there's a lot of interesting Go performance gotchas. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I basically was uh, going back and forth with uh, with Eric on a lot of things. Okay. And uh, have you done PPR profiles around like oh, yeah. allocations? And okay, yes, Good. yes, lots okay. of that. Uh, I think I. It's like it's it's one of those things that I. It's not that I'm doing things inefficiently. Like my allocation profile is mm -hmm. uh, essentially non-existent. I pretty much yep. allocate a whole. Uh, a huge plug in the beginning. I just do a lot of stuff that Go IPFS doesn't have to do uh, it, because okay. of the scanning for the repeat bytes and stuff like that. Yeah. So the one thing that I'm going to try is to basically add more hints of when can we skip stuff so we can, you know, so we can jump ahead and jump backwards and things like that within within the buffer that we have. And if that doesn't work satisfactory, I'll just leave it for later. And yeah, then we will need to pair up, but I want to basically get the UI with the tests uh, solidified, essentially the, the interrupt, so to speak, so that this kind of out of the, out, out of the way and then circle back to performance. Yeah. I'd like to note that like slightly slower than like fixed base or fixed chunking is not really an issue because like we expect any content based chunking to be slightly slower than fixed chunking. Uh, but it depends on how slow. So yeah, we'll it, it. well, uh, it 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 is about uh, so. Right now, it is about what's that? So I'm I think I'm getting two hundred max to IPFS uh, per second, and this is about one hundred and forty. So it's not horrible, but it is horrible. Yeah, it is horrible for test purposes. I needed yeah. to go like about four yeah. or five times faster. So uh, there are a lot of extra things that I haven't done, which are basically, because right now everything is single threaded, everything goes into a single pipeline. Okay. There's a lot of stuff that I can Paralyze. move move to other cores uh, because of how uh, functional it is. Basically there's very little state passed around, but mm -hmm. this again is out of my comfort zone for now, so I haven't started on that yeah. but yeah. I, I wouldn't try to make it too, like at the moment we're trying to prove this out, so like don't spend too much time optimizing it. If we need to, um, we can rent a beefy machine, just run on that beefy machine. Uh, I'll, I'll get to your question in a second. Uh, the point here is that for, for the purpose of figuring out what works and what doesn't on multiple data sets, you need, a lot of repeat tests over and over again with different parameters. And that part, basically, yeah, if perfect. I don't get it fast enough initially, yeah. it will take half a year and you know, we can't do that. Got it, okay. Yes, Sam. Uh, two, two hopefully really quick questions. Um, it, you said that you might have something ready by tomorrow. In what form does it come? tomorrow like is it a website is it a repo or something? It is, then... it, it is a CLI tool that reads from standard input. Gotcha. Uh, and then I don't have any, I don't, like, do you have a repo where you're putting all of this stuff at the moment that you can? Uh, there there the will be the moment, the, the moment it's ready, yes. I, 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 have, I haven't pushed anything yet. Okay. Because, because the, UI push kept, things. The, the UI keeps changing every time that there is uh, like, oh shit, I need, I need this other flag and this other flag. So uh, that's why I haven't pushed that. Yeah, but it, I think Alex's point is like, it's good just to have something. Uh, then people can start looking at it and like pointing things out. Uh, but yeah, I understand it's changing constantly. But it doesn't really matter. Just That's okay. Add bus factor and like if you know it, it needs to be on GitHub. We we need to everybody needs to be able to access and it be you'd be working in the open uh, unless it specifically like, is private. 
No, 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 no. It's not. It, it's it, it's not private. I just. I basically don't want people to look at it right now. <laughs> this is a safe space, Peter. You can it's share. It's okay. We're here to help. Fair enough. I'll push it right after this call. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. See you. Uh, okay. Now we have the backlog of other initiatives. Uh, the only updates here that I know of is the let's see distributed signaling. Uh, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're just going to we met with a browser connectivity group uh, last week, and so we're going to prioritize our work for the year for JSLB2B and figure out if is this is the next big thing to tackle. Um, so we're evaluating that, and we'll change things accordingly. Okay. I. Uh, Multi-hash keys and block stores. I actually have a question. Uh, Hector, um, I see you're here. What is asking? You may, you um, may only uh, so like, what was your schedule looking like in terms of like uh, creating a, um, a migration for this? I remember you said that you were gonna get to it maybe potentially like early February, end of January. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. I was going to ask you for the link. Um, this thing. Because I lost it. I deleted a lot of emails. Ah. Uh, one second. Uh, well, I'll find it after the call. OK. OK. Uh, but yes, I'm, I would like to work on some code. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see. Design review proposals. Alex, uh, would you like to propose anything around uh, like um, raw leaves and or uh, um, like, uh, link sizes? I think it might be good to have a discussion about those. Uh, yeah. Well, we were talking about the T size um, field of the uh, DAG links. Um, Basically, like it's it's an unreliable field. Um, it's a vector for attack. It can be expensive to generate depending on the APIs that you're using. Mm -hmm. um, but like, yeah, so I proposed um, deprecating it because mm -hmm. uh, we don't have to remove it because uh, due to how protocols have a zero value, it will come back as zero if we don't specify and it's an optional field. Um, but yeah, Stephen points out that you know existing tooling might break and that kind of thing. Um, I just I feel like if we had a call to just talk about this, we could quickly sync up on all the problems. Like my perspective on this is it's been there forever, and a lot of people rely on it anyways. So I don't want to say well, and now it's not here. Um, uh, but I feel like if we have it, like we might want to have a discussion about this, unless you don't feel like it's necessary. Well, I mean, um, can refactor how uh, JS imports. So that like so the problem that we have is that. Uh, the IPLD APIs don't tell you the serialized size of a thing after you've serialized it. Um, so the only way to find that out, which is what you need for the uh, for the um, to, to know the size of the thing that you're linking to, um, mm -hmm. the only way to do that is to serialize it and then pass it to IPLD. So you get the CID back from IPLD, and then you have the serialized size from your, your own serializing. And so you I end see. up serializing it twice, which is super tedious. Um, but we've kind of like, We've talked in the past about refactoring the importer to not use IPLD, um, to mm -hmm. just use like the IPLD DAG PB module to, you know, know how to read and write the protobufs, but to not actually use IPLD itself to do the uh, serialization um, for this kind of reason. Um, yeah, now I see you're trying to integrate a new system and it's tricky. Okay. I, but yeah, do like, we should probably actually schedule a call for this. Do you think mm -hmm. you could try to find time that everyone can meet? Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. So, if, okay. If anyone's interested in discussing uh, link sizes in DAG PB, um, uh, please put your name down here, and then Alex will coordinate a call. And the other thing was raw leaves. Um, yes. So you can specify uh, a raw leaves argument to um, the importer, and that will give you DAG. Sorry, not DAG. It will give you IPLD raw uh, nodes for the leaves of your DAG, uh, which don't have uh, a ProBuff wrap around them, so it's slightly more efficient. Um, it's an option, like maybe it should be on by default.
Uh, we could probably schedule them both together, but just put down your name on uh, both lists if you're interested in discussing this. Uh, and Alex, could you find the um, issues where you propose these things so we can put them here and uh, yeah. people can read them? Yeah, I'll stick Thank a link you. in the, the door. Yeah, just going back async over these discussions will take a while. So having like a good synchronous discussion about it, hash it out, get everyone on the same page, because I know I'm missing a lot of state on how, like, uh, well, the motivation for why we're doing this, for all the reasons for this. Okay. Uh, that covers sign review proposals as far as I know, unless someone else has another one. I'm not sure whether here or a different venue is appropriate, but we're going to have to have some discussions about the connection manager trimming stuff and like what approach you want to take to dealing with that. There's a few options available. Um, I don't know if that's a design proposal or if that's just the content routing group having a call uh, tomorrow. Yeah, let's talk about that in the call tomorrow. Okay. Um, that is everything there. Bloggers asks. Questions? Anything else parking lot? Okay, if you have any async updates, or well, you have async updates, please <coughs> please put your async updates uh, below for review. Um, we'll then PR uh, this notes, or these notes to the repo. Um, thank you all. Uh, we are now slightly on our time, so we can end the call, and uh, goodbye.